In this lecture, we're going to be taking a look at exchange rates and the balance of payments. The syllabus includes looking at the foreign exchange market, arbitrage and speculation, exchange rate policy, and balance of payments. Let's begin by taking a look at the foreign exchange market. A foreign currency is a money of another country, regardless of whether that money is in the form of notes, coins, or bank deposits. The currency of one country is exchanged for the currency of another currency in what is known as the foreign exchange market. This market is made up of importers, exporters, investors, speculators, travelers, etc. etc. An exchange rate is a price at which one country exchanges its currency for another currency in the foreign exchange market. Appreciation means that there's a rise in the exchange rate or the price of a currency and depreciation means that there's a fall in the exchange rate or a decrease in the price of that currency. An exchange rate is a price, the price of one currency in terms of another, and this price is determined in the foreign exchange market. The foreign exchange market is a competitive market because it has many many traders and there are no restrictions on who can trade. When people demand, for example, Canadian dollars, they supply their own country's money as they buy these Canadian dollars. The factors that influence the demand for Canadian dollars thus also influence the supply of other currencies. That's why we say that the demand for one currency is a good derivative of the supply of another currency. The law of demand for foreign exchange states that the higher the exchange rate, the lower is the qual quantity of currency demanded. The export effect states that the larger the value of our domestic exports, the larger is the quantity of our currency demanded, our country's currency demanded. The value of our exports depends on the prices of these goods as expressed in the currency of the foreign buyer's currency, and these prices depend on the exchange rate. So we're, if we're Canadian, we're not going to be stating our prices in Canadian dollars, or whoever's buying them from abroad is not going to be looking at it in terms of Canadian dollars. They're going to be taking a look at these prices in terms of their own currency to see how much they actually have to pay, and that's what's going to determine our exports. The lower the exchange rate, the lower are our, our, our um, prices for exports, and so the greater volume of exports that we will be exporting and that foreign countries will be importing from us. The export expected profit effect states that the larger the expected profit from holding a currency, the greater is that currency's quantity demanded. For a given expected future exchange rate, the lower the exchange rate today, the larger is the expected profit from buying that currency today and holding it, and thus the greater the quantity demanded today. The quantity of a currency supplied in the foreign exchange market is the amount that traders plan to sell during a given time period. The law of supply of foreign exchange states that the higher the exchange rate, the greater is the quantity of a currency demanded, sorry, supplied, currency supplied. The imports effect states that the larger the value of our domestic imports, the larger is the quantity of our currency supplied. The value of our imports, again, depends on the prices of foreign produced goods expressed in our country's currency. And again, like I mentioned with demand, these prices depend on the exchange rate. Ceteris paribus, the higher the exchange rate, the lower are the prices of foreign produced goods expressed in our currency, and so the greater is the volume of our imports. If our currency is valued at higher than another country's currency, that means that we can actually buy more stuff for less Canadian dollars from that country, and therefore the volume of our imports from that country will be greater. Thus, if the exchange rate rises, then the quantity of our money supplied decreases, sorry, increases. The expected profit effect states that the higher the exchange rate today, the larger is the expected profit from selling Canadian dollars, for example, today, and holding other foreign currencies, and so therefore the greater is the quantity of Canadian dollars supplied. If the exchange rate is too high, then there is a surplus of uh, the Canadian dollars, and if the exchange rate is too low, there is a shortage of Canadian dollars. 
the foreign exchange market is constantly pulled into equilibrium by traders who look for the best price that they can get. If they sell, then they want the highest available price, and if they buy, they want the lowest available price. So these market forces pull the foreign exchange market for any currencies into equilibrium, assuming of course that there is no central bank intervention or government intervention. Changes in demand are caused by a couple of things, the first of which being change in demand for our country's exports. So let's pretend like we're Canada. So changes in world demand for Canadian exports will change the demand for Canadian dollars. An increase in the world demand will increase the demand for our dollars because if another country wants to purchase our goods, they're going to have to pay us in Canadian dollars. So they need to buy Canadian dollars in order to actually buy our goods. So because they want more goods, they have to buy more Canadian dollars. So the demand for Canadian dollars will increase. And the same goes for if world demand decreases, then using the same logic, the demand for Canadian dollars decreases. The second factor that changes the demand for Canadian dollars is the Canadian interest rate relative to the foreign interest rate. The higher the interest rate that people can make on Canadian assets compared with foreign assets, the more Canadian assets they will actually buy. The Canadian interest rate differential is the Canadian interest rate minus the foreign interest rate. This foreign interest rate could be of any country we're comparing two countries. We're not talking about this in a general sense. If the Canadian interest rate rises and the foreign interest rate remains the same, the Canadian interest rate differential increases and the there is a greater demand for Canadian assets, thus there is a greater demand for Canadian dollars. And if the Canadian interest rate differential decreases and the foreign um, interest rate remains the same, then there's going to be a decrease in the demand for Canadian dollars because there's a decrease in the demand for Canadian assets. The expected future exchange rate also plays a role in the demand for Canadian dollars. A rise in the expected future exchange rate increases the profit that people expect to make by holding Canadian dollars, so the demand for Canadian dollars increases. And a fall in the expected future exchange rate decreases the profit that people expect to make by holding Canadian dollars, so the demand for Canadian dollars decreases. Changes in supply are caused by pretty much the same factors. Canadian demand for imports affects the supply. An increase in the Canadian demand for imports increases the supply of Canadian dollars in the foreign exchange market. As we discussed, suppliers of goods and services want to be paid in their currency. So if we're buying goods from abroad, we have to first purchase another currency and then pay that supplier in that currency. And so by buying that the currency from abroad, we're supplying Canadian dollars in order to do so. So the supply of our currency actually increases. A decrease in the Canadian demand for imports decreases the supply of Canadian dollars in the foreign exchange market. The Canadian interest rate relative to the foreign interest rate also plays a role, just like we discussed previously. The larger the Canadian interest rate differential, the smaller is the supply of Canadian dollars because people would decide to keep more of their funds in Canadian assets that yields a higher rate of return. So a rise in the Canadian interest rate lowers the supply of Canadian dollars and a fall in the Canadian interest rate increases the supply of Canadian dollars. The expected future exchange rate also plays a factor in the supply of Canadian dollars. A fall in the expected future exchange rate decreases the profit that can be made by holding Canadian dollars and thus decreases the quantity of Canadian dollars that people want to hold. This increases the supply on the foreign exchange market. As we've noted, there are two factors that affect both the supply and the demand of a currency at the same time. The interest rate differential and the expected future interest rate change both the demand and the supply of the foreign exchange market of that currency simultaneously.